All right, so let's talk about doing definite integrals on your calculator. So if you have either a graphing calculator or like one of these TI-36X Pros, you can pull it out. Now, if you have one of the TI-30Xs from chemistry that does not have definite integrals, um, so you'd be searching for like, where's my definite integrals? Like, you actually don't, don't have them. Uh, it's one of the reasons that I like the TI-36X Pro. So let's go ahead and do this, this integral by hand, and then we'll do it on the calculator, and we'll see um, what happens, okay? So, of course, we could take, it's a pretty simple integral. The integral of sine is a negative cosine, and if we analyze this from zero to 20 degrees, we get that the cosine of 20 is 0 0.939, and because there's a negative out front, uh, we put a negative out front there, and then we subtract off the integral or the, me, the value of cosine of zero, which is a negative, once again, the negative coming from this negative out front, um, one. And so this is equal to 0 0.06, once we round things, okay? So now noting that this is not a x is a function of y equation, right? This is varying with theta, but, you know, we could do that by hand. So... I was pretty excited when I found that my calculator would do definite integrals, and so I said, cool, I can do these on my calculator. So turn the calculator on, the definite integral button is second, um, this power button right here. Okay, it gives me my integral, my limits. Uh, my calculator is in degrees, okay, that's my, that's my current uh, angle mode. So from zero to 20, we put in here the sine of x, now, this calculator doesn't allow you to put in theta or y or t. It just calls everything x, right? So it's just, you just look at it and say, well, I know that I'm taking the derivative of this. Well, you can change it, but you can't change this dx. Yeah, it, it typically in its solver systems, it's going to use x as your first variable, y as your second variable, z as your third, just kind of a default. And so then you hit enter, and you get all excited, and you go, but it didn't give me the right answer. What's going on? Okay, so let's go ahead and check. So, like, this is a hypothesis that I did. I, like, ran it with degrees, and I said, well, maybe it has something to do with degrees, right? Degrees versus radians. And so then I came back, and I changed my mode. All right, so your mode over to radians. So now I'm in radians, and I go back in, and I put in integral here from zero. Now, one nice thing is you can actually put in these limits as, like, pi over something instead of writing out the decimal. So 20 degrees is like pi over 9. And put in the same sine of x. Now this gives you the right answer. So why? And that's exactly, so I don't have a great punchline for this one to know exactly why this happens. I think that it has something to do with the fact that degrees are not a unitless value, and so your calculator is trying to kind of outsmart you and turn things into radians. Because if you come back to this value, this 3.455, if you take that times pi and divide it by 180, it's actually equal to the same thing. Okay, so there's some kind of a degree versus radian conversion going on in the background. So bottom line is if you're going to take... Um, angle-based integrals in your calculator, definite integrals, that either feed it all radians or you have to convert your answer fundamentally doing a, a degree to radian conversion, or excuse me, a radian to degree conversion, see times, yeah, 180 over pi, to get it into the right value. I typically just go with radians. The other way, I'm always trying to remember, like, do I do the 180 over pi or pi over 180, which one's correct, okay? So a great tool, it's the only thing I've found in this calculator that, uh, and it's not just this one, I've actually tested it on the, some of the graphing calculators, it gives me the same numbers. It makes me scratch my head a little bit. I don't fully understand it, but um, I know that it exists, and so I just make sure I don't make that mistake. Just since we're here on the calculator, know that this calculator does a number of other things as well. There is a number solver. If you end up with kind of an ugly one equation, one unknown, where you can't isolate that variable, you can just plug in both sides of the equation into there, and it, it will solve the value for you. So it's not an indefinite solver to find like what you know one variable is equal to in terms of another variable, but it will give you the answer, the numeric answer, with the numeric approximation. It also has a poly solver. If you need roots of either quadratics or cubic functions, 
You can plug in the coefficients. It'll also do um, two by two and three by three linear systems. So like two equation, two unknown, or three equation, three unknown. Um, so just know that those tools are there. There's also some matrix tools. I think that the system solver is way easier than actually putting in your coefficients as matrices and doing an inverse. There's a lot more, lot better, lot more keystrokes if you use the matrix tool versus the system solver tool. All right, so that's kind of a side note, but it's just to say that our calculators are great, but know that they do have their limitations, they do have their quirks, and we have to know what those are.